In this video, we are going to create a Razor class library so that we can reference a component from our BlazorMovies.client project. The idea with a Razor class library is that with it, we can share Razor components throughout different projects. So let's do that. First, we are going to right click here on our solution and we are going to say add new project and we are going to write here Razor. And we're going to choose Razor Class Library. And let's click on Next. And for this name, we're going to say Blazor Movies.components. Because here we're going to have our Razor components. So now let's click on Create. And let's click on Create again. And this will create a new project. And as you can see, we have here the following structure. We have a www root directory in which we have some static resources like an image a js file and a css file we will work on this on the next video for now let's continue seeing the architecture of this Razor class library we also have a imports file in which we can put the namespaces that will be available throughout the Razor class library project and also we have an example component which is called component one we can reference this component from our Blazor WebAssembly client project. So let's do that. Let's go to the Solution Explorer and let's right click on our BlazorMovies.client project and let's say add and let's go to reference because we need to make a reference from this project to this components project that we have here. So we're going to say check components and then let's click on OK. And with this we have access to every single public resource of the Blazor.movies components project from our client project. So let's go here, let's go to pages and let's go to our counter component. And what we're going to do is that here, we're going to say component one. Component one is the name of the only component that is in the blazormovies.components project. So we want to use that component from here. And we can do that simply by making a reference to it from our counter component. And that's it. We can press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And let's go to the counter directive. And let's go to counter. Let's say counter here. And as you can see, we have this Blazor component is defined in the BlazorMovies.components package, which is the component one that we just saw here. Now, this is a component, just like any other component that we saw in the course. This component is not special just because it is in a Razor class library. It works exactly the same as all the components that we have seen. For example, we can say code here, and we can define, for example, a variable, let's say prop, a string, name, and I will just put my name here, and I will display this variable here. And also besides that, we can say, and let's say parameter here, and let's close this, let's put a semicolon here, and now let's say, for example, param1, get and set. And this is a parameter that we can pass to our component. Let's say dash here, and param1. And you are going to see that we are able to use that parameter from here. We can say param1. We may have to compile our application. This is a parameter. And let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And you are going to see that our component still works. Let's go here, let's refresh the page, and as you can see we have Felipe, and this is a parameter. Again, this is a normal component that works as any other component that we have seen. Now, as we can see, we have to use the complete address to reference that component one component. If you don't want to do that, you know that you can use the import file of the client project. So, let's go here, let's cut this, and as you can see, we got an error here, but we are going to fix it right away. Let's go to the Solution Explorer, and let's go to the Imports file of the client project. Let's double click here, and then let's say using, and we're going to say BlazorMovies.components. And with this, we have access to the component one component directly. And of course, if we recompile the application, and we go back here, you can see that this still works, as you can see here. Though there is a problem here. Look at the styling of this text that we have here. If we go here, 
to the component one component, you are going to see that we have a my component class. And that my component class that we have defined here in the ww root style CSS file, it defines a border which is red and dash, but we don't have that here. That is because we are not using that CSS file. We will see that next.